Google initially and then why did you leave? Well, those are two very different stories. Do you have any regrets about leaving Google? Because you did come back as a vendor. I know Google is the dream job for a lot of different people. Working in Fang is. And do you think it's still like a really good place to work for software engineers? Hi friends, welcome to the channel. For those of you new here, I'm Maddie and I'm a senior software engineer. Today we have a really special guest, my bestie Delia. I am so happy that she's here. I've filmed so many videos on your channel, but you've never been on mine. So this is like the first time. Well, and to I, be fair, you just started your channel. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I was filming it only two months ago. And I've been convincing her to do it for four years. Yes, Delia is the best influence. Um, and the best influence as far? Del no, Delia is the best influence. You, I think she's the reason why I like post on social media. Why Yay, I'm YouTube. influencing influencers. Yes. <laughs> um, should make that. Make an AI, influ a AI agent that influences influencers. Oh. <laughs> anyway, today I wanted to sit down with Delia and talk about her journey in tech, her joining Google, leaving Google and kind of where she sees the future of the industry. Oh. So for context, I actually myself left Google around three months ago, but Delia left Google some years like ago. Like three years ago. Yeah. So I wanted to know why did you join Google initially and then why did you leave? Oh, well, those are two very different stories. I joined Google initially. I was just recruited by a recruiter, like a recruiter reached out to me. And I never really intended to work at Google because at the time it wasn't remote and I would have never considered an office job, but I thought it was good interview practice for the remote software engineering roles I actually wanted. And then it was crazy because the universe aligned everything for me. So while I was interviewing at Google, COVID happened and everything became fully remote. And I was like, oh, actually I could work at Google if it's remote. And yeah, and I just have always been remote. And then before I left, I even signed to be fully remote, but then I got another opportunity that required me to leave Google. So I only left because um, my new opportunity kind of forced me to. Otherwise, I would have done both. What is the new opportunity you left Google for? The opportunity was to create Infra Expert, which was a sub product of Algo Expert, uh, which helps software engineers prepare for interviews. So it's kind of like leak code for infrastructure engineers. It's like you can try out little SQL and bash queries and an entire course on infrastructure engineering type questions. Nice. Yeah. And then since then, I've been doing a bunch of consulting. Um, yeah. Working with big and small companies on growth and social media strategy. I actually went back to Google as a vendor. So helping the Google for developers team and like working closely with some teams in Google on social media stuff, which is crazy. Full circle. Yeah, it, it really came full circle. So yeah, I definitely enjoyed being a Google vendor more than a Google employee. Do you have any regrets about leaving Google? Because you did come back as a vendor. Would you ever come back full time? If they offered me remote, yeah. If they offered me a San Francisco salary that's fully remote, I would totally consider it. If I had a really cool job offer, I would probably go back to Google. But I wouldn't want to go back as a software engineer. Mm. I'd want to go back with growth, like a growth role, something related to like business development, working with startups. Like I would love to work for, you know, Google has like little mini incubators for different AI startups. I would love to work on a team like that or something, something different. I wouldn't want to go back as a software engineer or a technical solutions engineer. Got it. In terms of timing, you left Google after around two years-ish, two, three years. I know that you're really happy with your current role and what you do. Do you ever think that you should have left earlier or do you think those like two, three years was the perfect amount of time at Google? I actually wish I left a little later. So when I left, about six months later is when all the huge tech layoffs started happening because I've never been properly laid off. But I think I would have liked to stay to get like a severance package and it would have better deal than quitting, you know, because you don't really get anything when you quit. Um, except for, I guess, knowing that I quit. I see. Yeah, there, I, I definitely. So I also have never got laid off, but I know friends whose companies have given them like voluntary yeah, severance packages and I would have loved to wait for a voluntary severance package. Yeah, I think like for someone who doesn't have something lined up, it could be really scary. And I, I totally understand why you wouldn't. Yes. But I had some friends who were really lucky and they were job searching. They just so happened to get offers and then the severance came. Down. Exactly. So you, I might as well just like get laid off voluntarily and get the severance. And then exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, just because you're asking in terms of timing, like that would have been perfect. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, it's obviously not that important. And I think it would have been 
the best time to leave because I had been at Google for around two years. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was either you stay for the full like four years to vest all your stock. But also I didn't have much stock because in Canada, they didn't give me a lot of stock. Like the the stock options are different than in, in America. A lot of people's salaries are stock options. For me, it wasn't that important. I was like, oh, am I going to wait for all my stuff to vest when it's not even that significant? Probably not. And I didn't want to leave. I had just switched to a software engineering role. So I didn't want to leave too soon into that, especially because I really liked my team. I already felt a little bit bad leaving. I was like, oh, I have only been on this team like seven months and it felt awkward to like tell my manager that I want to leave. So it was pretty much the minimum amount of time I should have spent on the team. Oh, I have a story about bad timing in terms of team leaving. So I used to be in Google Ads. I left for Airbnb. Um, however, the week before I got my actual final offer from Airbnb, like I had a verb offer, but no, no signed contract. Um, I got switched. My team got switched. I got a new manager. So unfortunately, like the very first day I met my new team, I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to have to leave. But then during that team welcome lunch, he announced that he was going out of office for a month. I was like, oh, so then I quickly pulled him aside and just like mentioned that I you know, didn't have it finalized, but I was most likely going to leave. And then it was a whole thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, at least you didn't leave a day after joining a new team. Like, no, but mine, mine was also a whole thing because I had gotten the new opportunity, like the offer for my new role. Um, but then we had to negotiate contracts and I had already told my manager. So like, don't tell your managers anything until you've signed a contract and it's final. Because then I just kept working on the team for like four months, which was fine. But I feel like there's a different pressure on you when they know that you're leaving and you're still on the team. Like, it's just an awkward gray area. So I wish I hadn't given them so much heads up. You know, you have to give Google like 30 days notice or two weeks notice. Two weeks. Yeah. And no, in my contract, it was 30 days, which is oh. also weird. Okay. I gave them like four months notice, oh. which is funny. But I felt bad. Like, I, I was like, oh, I like just joined this team semi recently. So I should probably give them a huge heads up. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they appreciated it. So think gears, I'm just curious. I know Google is like, you know, the dream job for a lot of different people working in Fang is. As someone who got the dream job, worked there and then left, especially with the new tech landscape in 2025, do you think it's still like a really good place to work for software engineers? Absolutely. Like if I were to be a software engineer full time again, I would 100% want to work somewhere like Google because you work with the smartest people in the world. Like, honestly, I've never worked with such smart people and such a, I, I've just, I've never had such great coworkers at any other company than when I worked at Google. I love, like, when I meet Googlers out in the wild, I always get along with Googlers. There's something about them. So clearly they're very good at their interview process. Yeah, they're all nerds, <laughs> um, but it's more than that. They're all googly. Like. Yeah. The, the quality of Googliness is, is hard to like yeah. boil down into one thing. Um, but I feel like I would love to work somewhere like that if I were to be a software engineer. Now, would I ever get a nine to five job ever again? Absolutely not. I want to work for myself. And I've now realized like even after Google, uh, I had a really cool job opportunity, like a full time nine to five that I did for three or four months last year. And it was like the coolest job in the world, but I still in the back of my head was like, I want to work for myself. So it's nothing against the jobs. It's just like what I've realized for myself is that I need to work for myself and I'm a lot happier that way. But if I were mm, like an, a nine to five person again, I would love to work somewhere like Google or a big tech thing company, especially Airbnb. Oh my God, Airbnb, you have 11 months of working from anywhere in the world, right? Uh, so at Airbnb, we have, you cannot work more than three months in any other country. Right, but, but it means, can be different countries. Yeah, so that means, for example, you could get American salary for working one month in the US and then one month each in 11 other different countries. Which is crazy. I, so for full disclosure, I haven't tried this, so I can't guarantee it works, but that's what the recruiter told me when I joined. Yeah, but I know if you work outside of the US for 11 months, you get your first 130K tax-free. Oh. So that's like the ultimate life hack. If you work at somewhere like Airbnb where you can work in the U.S. or like get a U.S. salary but not be in the U.S., holy, that's like a crazy life hack. 
So I would do something like that if I wanted to go back to full-time software engineering. But not full-time beyond like that. Like, sorry. Oh, no, I would never get an office job. I see. Yeah. But for people that love the office, for people that love like I do love some human interaction. You know, I miss being in the office with my friends and colleagues sometimes. And so if you're the kind of person that loves that, like 100 no. percent, those are the best yeah. places to work I because feel... the amenities, the food, the vibes, it's it's awesome. Yeah. Ironically, I feel like so I love the office. Delia can attest. I, I used to go to the office every single day, even on weekends for the gym. I still hang out with all my Google friends all the time. Like we went to Google, we went to a party that was like basically 50 Googlers. Every party she brings me to is 50 Google. Like, like, like Delia mentioned, the people are so, like, they're so Googly. They're so nice. They're so amazing. Um, I was going to say, I actually think me going to the office sometimes, like, makes me less productive just because I get distracted oh, yeah. by the perks and by I agree. friends. I'm way more productive um, remotely. So I do actually think uh, currently now that I work remotely, um, I see my coworkers once a month, like, optionally in the office in San Francisco. But other than that, like, I'm just in my own place, doing my own thing. And I think that's been really, uh, really, really productive, actually, especially as I'm roughing up. Love that. Yeah. I know that you said you wouldn't go back to a nine to five at a fang company or at like a normal company, but do you think you'll consider building your own startup or joining a startup that you see has a lot of potential? I definitely want to build my own startup. So the dream now is to move to San Francisco, build my own startup. Yes, you should move to San Francisco. Yeah. I've been trying to And find my future her. husband. Yes. If you have any applications, put them in the comments. <laughs> actually not my oh, bad be so imagine i meet my future husband from your youtube video that'd be so funny that would be a great story yeah i see a lot of my friends leave google for startups um or for academia actually to be honest so i'm sure having your own startup and something that you're really passionate about might be the natural step for a lot of people who you know were in big tech and are searching for the next thing to do 100 percent. uh last question because i know you have a lot of ai experience um what do you think about the future of software engineers and AI? Do you think AI will replace us all? No, it won't replace us all. Um, but I think it's already replacing a lot of junior software engineers. I think it'll definitely drastically reduce the number of software engineers you need to build and in the same way that we used to. So like now you can scale an app to millions of users with a small team and AI, whereas before you needed like 50 software engineers to do something like that, right? So I think, especially for a lot of startups, for a lot of new companies, it's crazy how little res like software engineering resources you need from big companies that still have all this legacy code and all these systems that like need humans to understand it because AI can't do that stuff yet. I think those jobs are gonna be around for a lot longer, but I do think there will be a reduction in the, in, in the amount of software engineers we need, which is scary. But I think they'll, you know, become prompt engineers, become vibe coders slash PMs. And like there will be a transition from software engineering to like expanding that role into a, like a bigger bucket. And I think we're already starting to see that happen. And it's going to happen way, way more in the, in the next few years. And then maybe down the line in a long time, we'll see like very, very few. Because already English is the new programming language, like the biggest, most popular one. So, yeah, I, eventually, like in a decade, mm. I think it'll be a more extinct role. Well, yeah. well, something I do realize is that software engineering gives you a lot of skills that are applicable to many other industries and in others' careers. So I'm hoping that if AI does take over a lot of what we do, people can adapt and we can learn, like, like, like said, comp engineering, other things and just be adaptable. That's the biggest thing. If you're adaptable, you'll be fine. Yeah. Never, honestly, never stop learning. I think that's something that every, I would say every single really, really should do. Yes. Well, thank you so much for watching. And thank you to Delia for being on my channel for hopefully the first of many, many times. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a like. It really helps and subscribe. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I, and hopefully Delia will answer them. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.